finally, to close this out, uh, let's talk a little bit about how governments handle uh, market power. Traditionally, people hear monopoly and they think that's probably a bad thing. And for the most part, they're right. Um, the deadweight loss associated with market power, that area that we just saw on the graph, uh, can justify government intervention if regulations help achieve a more competitive or efficient outcome. So the government could do this uh, a few ways. First is direct price regulation. Uh, in some cases, the government will regulate price rather than attempt to dismantle a monopoly um, or an attempt to encourage new participants. Uh, usually this is the case with natural monopolies where the long run average total cost for the firm continuously falls as output increases. It doesn't necessarily make sense uh, to try to break up that monopoly. Uh, consider uh, a utility that provides electricity to town. This utility has huge uh, fixed costs up front. They have to transmit uh, the electricity through uh, uh, wires. Uh, they have to create uh, electricity generators. Um, but once that stuff is up and running, it has very low marginal costs. So it doesn't necessarily make sense for the town to try to break up uh, that monopoly. What would that look like if we brought it to the graph? Well, we have the sort of classic monopoly case here, but we've added the long run average total cost for this natural monopoly. So uh, let's assume that we're operating a monopoly case. We have our QM. Uh, QM here, you bring up the line to the demand curve with PM. This is the consumer surplus, A is the consumer surplus, and B is the producer surplus, and then C is the debt weight loss. What happens if the regulator forces the utility to provide the efficient level of uh, electricity, or where the long run marginal cost equals demand? So what happens if the government forces the utility to operate at this point C. This is effectively a price cap. Uh, and so the price cap is uh, equal to the firm's marginal cost. Uh, and so the firm uh, produces at a perfectly competitive price and quantity. Uh, you end up with a consumer surplus of this whole area. Um, but, this is important, but, since the price of perfect competition falls below the firm's long run average total cost, the firm will be making a negative profit. And because the firm is making a negative profit in the long run, it uh, would not want to stay in the market forever. And so in this case, the price cap would not work forever. Eventually the firm would say, we're losing too much money, uh, we're exiting the market. There are other ways uh, other than price caps um, for the government to regulate uh, a market. The most prominent is antitrust laws. If you think back to um, your history classes, maybe in high school, um, antitrust laws were a big deal in the early uh, 20th century, in the 1900s. Teddy Roosevelt um, got famous for breaking up big companies. That's what antitrust laws are. They're designed to promote competition uh, in markets by restricting behavior that limits competition. Uh, mergers and acquisitions, price fixing and other forms of collusion, predatory pricing, uh, these are all ways that firms basically cheat in markets and get around uh, 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 regular, well-functioning competitive uh, conditions. But it can be difficult to determine if concentration is bad for consumers. So if a bunch of firms merge, um, it can be difficult for the government to tell whether or not a uh, consumer surplus is uh, bad. Um, I think now the sort of uh, um, most prominent case of this is Amazon. Uh, I buy a lot of stuff from Amazon. It gets delivered to uh, my apartment within two days. Uh, I don't have to go out to buy it. Um, and a lot of times the stuff is pretty cheap. Um, and so it's not clear 
even though Amazon ends up having a lot of market power, they have a lot of market share and a bunch of different products. Um, it's not clear whether or not that's actually bad for consumers. Um, so that's the problem that the government has with, um, with regulating through antitrust laws. Uh, it's, there are always, uh, pretty compelling arguments on both sides, like in the Amazon case that sure, maybe Amazon is taking up a huge portion of online shopping. Um, but is that necessarily bad for consumers? Um, and so the justice department in the United States government, um, spends a lot of time trying to figure out, um, whether or not markets are competitive or not. Um, in other cases, though, the government may actually promote monopolies. They can do stuff like uh, issuing patents, patents and licenses uh, and copyrights. These are designed to spur innovation, um, but they have to be careful uh, because in setting the length of the patents, they have to balance the incentive for innovation with the reduction in consumer welfare that comes with granting monopoly. Um, when the government grants a patent to a drug manufacturer, uh, say for um, something like insulin, uh, they have to be careful because they want to get companies to invest in research and development for new drugs. But uh, it's very bad for people who need the drug um, in the long run if the government makes the patent too long because then the drug company can raise the price on the drug, um, which will obviously have bad side effects for lots of folks. Um, I think that this part of econ is super interesting. And in the next chapter, um, we'll get into more detail about markets where um, uh, firms exercise market power and talk a little bit more about um, things like collusion, which I think are a little bit more fun than some of the stuff that we've been talking to talking about up until this point.